Okay, so today we have a little bit different than what I've recorded the last couple times. We are going to be going through a quick walkthrough of this little documentary film set that I set up today that we just got done recording. So if I flip you around, you can see we have our key light coming in motivated oh let me step back so you can see motivated by the natural light coming out from the window so really all i wanted to do with this is just accent that a little bit more so we could drop the exposure in our camera a little bit so that way we had overall a little bit more of a dark contrasty feel but still getting plenty of light on one side of the face so that's why we have just our key light with uh, about 25 percent i think it is and then the light coming through on the window and then for all these, I'll probably throw some uh, examples over top just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And so for our audio, we have kind of three things going on here. We have our boom mic running down the cable going into our Vocaster interface. Um, and that's just a Cinco D1 mic, uh, which I'll be probably doing a review on sometime soon because uh, this is actually the first time I've ever used it in the field. Um, but I think it sounds great for a pretty cheap price. Um, can't go wrong with that. So then our other audio, we have our DJI mic going into our main cam, the Lumix S526. And then we just have some scratch audio here on the road that we probably won't be using. Uh, hopefully everything else records fine, so we probably won't use that, but it'll be good for syncing in post. And then so cameras, Let's talk about, we have the Lumix S52X, as I just mentioned, and the Lumix X5, S5, uh, recording kind of our wider A cam, and then a little bit tighter B cam, catching that side angle. Uh, and again, I'll throw some examples over top of this so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. We have a little bit of uh, a fill or a, a neg over there that's also acting I should say a sound blanket that's also acting as a little bit of a neg. I would probably want it to be a little bit more on the side of him, but where our cameras were positioned, we kind of had to go with what we had right there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, the whole setup here. We have our two cameras, one light, some motivated lighting coming outside, uh, two main microphones, but really we're gonna be relying on this one here, the Cinco D1 shotgun. Um, and that's, yeah, that's kind of it. So I'll break this down a little bit more uh, and talk a little bit more exactly why I chose these things. Uh, but here's kind of what we had in the field. Okay guys, we're back here at my home studio. I'm gonna show you real quick the gear that I packed for this shoot and explain in a little bit of detail and give a little bit of context about why I chose specific pieces of gear. So let's just get started. And to start it off, let me get rid of the big items out of the way first. And let me just say that I packed everything into these two bags. I have my uh, Arco rolling bag that I've talked about in a previous video in the 10 pieces of uh, filmmaking gear I use all the time. This one I packed uh, a lot of stuff away in and then I packed all my camera bodies and lenses in the Nanook 935 which is a fantastic uh, substitute if you don't want to get a Pelican case or um, or whatever. It's just a, a, a good um, option if you want to go that route as well. So. Those are the two cases that I packed everything in. I should also say that I took these two rolling uh, C-stands. Both of these are Impact brand, I believe. Um, I got them both from B&H, but they're not the sturdiest necessarily. They don't have 
the best rating as far as um, like weight uh, payload goes. Like there is a little bit of flex at the bottom because the the uh, the legs fold up, as you could just see there. So you can't necessarily put too much weight on them, but it's just enough to hang uh, a couple things on. I put a light on one of them, I put my key light on one, and then I just hung a bar across that I also got from Impact, um, and then I put that negative fill on that as well. So those did the job for that, and I will get into what I brought along with me. So let me just start here with, let's start with media over here. So. I brought uh, my cards, obviously. I have this PGY Tech card case slash reader. Um, I have two uh, VHS2 um, cards in here for my Lumix X S5-2X. And then I got a couple um, just normal SD cards in here. So I brought that. So let's pack that away in here in this big case. I got uh, my SSD, which I plug directly into my Lumix S52X, and I record off the SSD. Sometimes I record on the internal slots to the Sony's cards that I just showed, but I prefer to go the SSD route. Gives you a better um, recording as far as like um, the bit rates you can get and different codecs that are uh, only available for the SSD recording. So I choose that. Um, and that one is just from Sans SanDisk, it's a two terabyte. And then obviously we got to get batteries. So I have three of these Lumix batteries because both my S5 and my S52X run on those. Um, right now I have one in the S5, which I'm recording on right now, which I also brought to the shoot as a B cam. Um, but obviously I'm recording on that right now, so I can't take that down and put it in my bag. But three batteries, four in the S5. And then we also have this Atomos Ninja 5 recorder with the, um, I have a Samsung 870 Evo uh, SSD, SATA SSD in here, I believe. Um, so I took these both along with me. I like to record to SSD um, through the recorder, the Atomos recorder, um, as just kind of a, a redundancy backup. I don't often use this file because I prefer to use the file straight off the camera but this is a great option to not only view what you're looking at a little bit better, um, but to have a backup recording just in case you need it. So got that. Um, and then uh, I did bring one battery and I choose to usually use the um, included, I guess this is a 6.2 volt to 16.8 volt DC connector, which then I just run this cord which is a DC to DTAP connector, which I plug into this Andy Cine uh, 95S uh, B-mount battery. It's awesome. It was like 120 bucks on Amazon. Um, there's a couple in this kind of price range that offer similar features, but I thought this one offered um, the most different features. It's got two DTAPs, it's got a USB-C connection, and just really solid reviews as well. So got all those to bring with me um, and then I guess we could move on to let's just move on right here to audio a sure uh, XLR cable which I then ran into the vocaster 2 um, interface which is a fantastic interface I just got this I have the vocaster 1 which was in my video um, on the 10 things that you need and so I got the Vo vocaster 2 so that I could leave that permanently on my desk and then bring this to uh, shoots, and if I need to do a podcast or anything like that, this thing's awesome. So I brought those. And then for audio, I also brought, so that was running the uh, running into the Vocaster, and with the XLR cable was this um, brand new to me, not brand new, but brand new to me, Cinco D1 XLR uh, shotgun mic which I ran, as you'll see in some of the shots, ran overhead as, you know, the traditional shotgun placement and overhead mic to get uh, the main audio I, uh, I'm going to end up using for that, um, for that video when it's done. Um, so brought that as well. 
Um, lighting wise, let's get this big bad boy out of the way. Lighting, I just have this big GVM um, cob light with an included lantern softbox, which I'm sure you saw in some of those clips. Um, I think it's a fantastic light. It's nothing fancy. It was like 250, 300 bucks. It's not an aperture. It's not even, you know, an Amaran or anything like that. Um, but it's a pretty good quality light. This one's only bicolor. It does not do RGB, but I haven't really needed to use that in any of my shoots so far, but uh, a fantastic light for the price and it offers a decent amount of features. Now, so speaking of lighting, um, we also have this little um, unfoldable, foldable, pop out gray card slash um, white balance card, which I bring with me to every shoot and I most of the time use it. Uh, I have been a lot of the times lately just going off of Kelvin and setting the white balance there. Um, but I'll usually do a check on this as well just to make sure I'm at least in the ballpark. But I do like to record with files that will allow me to adjust color and post if needed. But I would always recommend, always, always, always recommend, especially with white balance and exposure, doesn't matter if you're using RAW, ProRes, anything like that, get your exposure and white balance correct in camera. It will save you a lot of time in the edit and it always just comes out looking better. So um, we brought that along with us and then audio as well. I ran a second channel of audio. Well, actually these are just <laughs> headphones to monitor the audio, just some little $15 Apple headphones, but I like these. They're um, small and compact and they get the job done if you're just trying to monitor. Um, I have this purple panda love that I've had forever which is not the best quality, I'll be completely honest, which is why I wanted to get the Cinco Mic D1 as my main source of audio. Um, this did a decent job, but you could definitely tell um, that it just doesn't have a lot of those same frequencies, especially in the high end, it's a little bit muddier, um, but it does a decent job, so I brought that along just in case we needed to use it if anything went wrong with the Cinco Mic D1. And going into that, I also have the DJI Mic system, the system one, um, which has been great for me. Um, I know that the mic system two just came out and it has a lot of cool features. Excuse my dog just walking by and banging the, banging the table. If you heard that, um, and I, I know they just came out with the DJI mic system two, but I love this one. I don't know if I'll get that one anytime soon because this still does a great job. So I brought that for audio and that's pretty much it for audio. And then as far as the video goes, uh, I obviously brought the Lumix S5, which I just, uh, which I said earlier I'm recording on now. And then for my main cam, let's go with the body first. Um, I have my Lumix S5 2X and running into that, I actually had um, a little bit of a decision to make on the day um, about which lens I wanted to use because I wanted to get a nice, tight, compressed, um, second angle, uh, which is going to have like a nice amount of bokeh in the background and just kind of that little bit tighter framing around the upper shoulder and face. And I didn't really, I really couldn't quite get that with my 28 to 70. Um, but I do love this lens from Sigma, the 28 to 70 2.8. Um, and so I was going back and forth between using my 100 to 400, but that just ended up being a little bit too long. If I would have had maybe an 85, that would have been perfect, but we ended up going with the 28 to 70 on the S5 to, uh, in the end. Um, I also brought my Lumix uh, 1.8 50 millimeter, didn't end up using that, but it's a fantastic lens as well. And then I end up using what's on my uh, camera now, uh, the Lumix S5 for the main wide angle, my 16 to 28 2.8 which I love having kind of in a pair of the 16 to 28 and then the 28 to 70, both 2.8, um, just kind of gives you a good range. I could probably do with an 85, that might be down the road, but um, anyway, so I have that, and then I just had my HDMI cable. This one is an 8K HDMI cable um, by a company called Xylar, just got it off of uh, B&H, and then I have my little, um, little cage system thing, mount system, which has a uh, a Manfrotto plate for my tripod, which is the small rig um, 
small rig. I forget the actual like number, the title of it, but it's their newest small rig, uh, like carbon fiber video heavy duty tripod. It was about 400 bucks on Amazon. And so I have the Manfrotto plate that runs into that, a quick release system, um, which is a PGY tech quick release system. And then this awesome Nitsi, um, v-mount plate which has some cool attachments to it as well and then on top of the camera to hold my monitor i have this uh nitsy stinger i believe is the is the title of this one nitsy stinger uh which is one of my favorite handles i've ever used it's got a great balance good ergonomics with these little um finger slots here and it's awesome and then i have this hawk lock by small rig which i have attached to my atomo so that way i can just pop that in pop it off when I'm done. And then also from small rig, we have this matte box, which I ended up putting on my um, S5 2X. And then we brought along two ND filters for both my lenses that I ended up using because uh, we wanted to record with natural light and have the window open. And so the ND filters were a must to get the exposure correct and try to preserve as much of the highlights as possible coming in from the window without blowing things out and overexposing the face. So that's where our key light came in, our GVM key light to just pop a little bit of light on the face to allow us to turn down the exposure a little bit more and get as much right in camera as possible. So that's what we brought. Hopefully it turned out pretty nice. Uh, you guys be the judge of that. and. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.